What's going on AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. Welcome back to another episode of Trade Talk. In this video guys, I'm going to be covering all the targets and the rookies that you should be looking at heading into round 8 of the AFL season. So I'm pretty excited to record this video for you guys. It's exciting times as AFL fantasy coaches. We finally have some freedom in what we're able to do this week. It doesn't look like we've got any forced injury concerns to deal with at this present stage. So that being said, we should have quite a bit of flexibility in what we're able to do with our moves this week. There's plenty of guys to look at both as rookie targets and as underpriced premium options. So we'll jump straight into the rookies. My number one rookie target is Riley Collier Dawkins. Was fantastic on debut last week. The thing I like about Riley the most is he lays tackles. So in this role, he's playing a lot of inside midfield. He was the highest attending center bounce player for Richmond, excluding Nankovus. He's going to lay five tackles a game, so he's got that baseline of 20 points. He should be able to score 60-plus consistently, and I think his job security is pretty strong now with Cochin injured with a hamstring. So he's one that I'd be confident bringing in and playing on the field if need be. He's my number one target. Number two, we have Martin Frederick. He's got the two games under his belt. He has a fantastic role at half-back for Port Adelaide. While Port do have a strong side, he brings something unique to the team. I think he's got pretty good job security. He should be around for a while. His scoring looks to be there. Minus 12 break-even. He's going to make a stack of cash. If you're potentially looking at a double downgrade, these are the two guys that I would be bringing in but I don't necessarily recommend doing a double downgrade this week. I'll touch on that a bit later in the video. Frederick's one that if you do like, potentially go this week because Collier Dawkins will be cheap enough next week to get. So that's my thoughts on those guys. My third next best option is Nick Bryan from Essendon. It was fantastic on debut, showed a lot of ability showed that he's definitely one for the future and Essendon have a great player on their hands. It looks like Phillips is going to be right to return this week, but based off what we saw from Brian in his first game, I think he's good enough to hold Phillips out of the side. He is up against Shane Mumford this weekend, so I'm not quite sure how that's going to go for him, but in terms of how many games I expect him to play for the rest of the year, I think it's going to be similar to what we see from Matt Flynn. I don't think Flynn's going to come back this week and a lot of people will look to trade him in order to free up some cash to potentially grab an upgrade. So Brian's a guy that I'd be looking to downgrade Flynn to if Flynn's at your Ruck 3 spot. If you still have Flynn on field at this stage, I think you need to be looking to upgrade him to a more stable Ruck option. Fourth on the pecking order, we have Matthew Owies. Came in for Carlton, kicked three snags. Looks like he's got a pretty, not a decent scoring role in the side, but he looks like he's got a role there, and I can see him being there for pretty long term, at least another month or so. So while I don't think his scoring will be fantastic, he'll be there, he'll be consistently available for you, and he offers great bench cover. So he's one that I'd be looking to target, but only for the bench. Popularly talked about, my fifth option is Ryan Burns, but while he sits at number five, I don't think he's an option. I wouldn't be going with him. I don't think his job security is great. St. Kilda have been chopping and changing their side all year, and while they did win last week, and I expect them to have an unchanged side, going into round eight. I just don't think he's going to be there long term. And with 
Lots of teams having guys like Jay Rantel, Finlay McRae, these types of guys. I wouldn't be taking a risk on him. I think he's a, a red dot in the near future. So don't be jumping on Ryan Burns, in my opinion. Jumping into some of the underpriced premium type options that I like. This is the exciting part of the video, guys, because we have plenty on offer. There's lots available to choose from. And this is the main reason why I'm not a big advocate for the double downgrade, just because I think some of these guys provide too much value to leave on the table and will probably rise significantly in price if you don't choose to get on this week. So a big talk about point is Aaron Hall. Is he a must have? What's the go with him? Look, in my opinion, whilst last week, Let's use Jack Zabel for an example. Last week, I wasn't big on Jack Zabel because of the price point. It wasn't because of his ability. So Aaron Hall, very similar role. He's taking split kick-ins with Zabel. And North look to possess the ball around the back. I can't see this changing going forward. He comes in priced at 81. He's shown he's got that big ceiling of 140. I expect him to continue to score well. His average excluding his concussion affected scores is 121 for the season. I expect him to keep continuing at 100 plus and in my opinion he's a must target this week. I think he's an absolute smash play and I'll be going all in on Aaron Hall this week. Josh Dacos is another guy that I really like. He scored poorly at the start of the year. He'd been playing forward a lot, which enabled him to gain forward dual position status. He's priced in that mid to low 70s bracket. And the last two weeks, last week in particular, we saw him at a very high midfield usage. Buckley looks to be quite happy with him inside. And with Collingwood having limited options to play that role, I think I can see this continuing going forward. For that reason, I think we're going to see an uptick in scoring. He plays North Melbourne this week, which is fantastic. If you're going to jump straight on board, I expect that you'll be rewarded this week and going forward into the future. I'll be targeting Hall this week, but Dacos is certainly one that's high on my radar and I'll be looking potentially to grab him next week if possible. Switching to defence, Caleb Daniel is super cheap at the moment. He's priced at the low 80s, 81 I believe. We know he's a 90 guy, so the value's there. The issue with Daniel is you're getting yourself a roller coaster. The consistency isn't really there. He's susceptible to a tag, as he demonstrated earlier in the year where he scored 20. For that reason, I'm not super hot on him, but in saying that, He's not that much of a step up from a rookie. And if he's the best guy you can get to, I think he's a good option if it allows you to get a rookie off the field. Lockie Whitfield back into the side last week enabled Josh Kelly to get back to his old role. We saw him spend a lot of time up on the wing and for the first time in what seems to be four or five weeks, we did see him get back into the center bounce rotation not at a high rate, but he was in there. So he played that outside wing role for most of the game and as a result was able to rack up plenty of the footy. He scored 121, which was a season high. If GWS can manage their list and stay healthy, I expect him to continue in this role. And I think that we could potentially see Kelly push that 105, 110 average for the rest of the year. He's currently priced in that mid-80s bracket. I think there's plenty of value here. Jump on board. I think that he's potentially one of the better, if not the best forward premium type option available. Andrew Brayshaw is another guy that I think provides great value. If we exclude his tag affected scores, he's averaging 113 this year and he's priced at 98. There's 15 points upside there. I picked him at the start of the season in mind that I think that he could push that 110 average. I think that he is around that mark. With Fife going into the middle, Mundy in such hot form, 
I don't really see opposition teams targeting him from this point forward. I think that those guys can help him a lot in the midfield, having those bigger, more experienced bodies in there. I think there's decent value here, and he's the guy that I'd probably be chasing in that midfield brigade. The next guy, he's been proven that he's fantasy royalty over the last few years of fantasy footy. Super unique, no one owns him, so if you're looking for a point of difference, this could be your guy. I'm talking about Basher Hawley from Richmond. He's down a decent amount on his starting salary. He comes in priced at that high 90s bracket as well, but he has that ceiling ability. He can go big, and that's the sort of thing that you're looking for when targeting these premium types, especially in that defense zone. He is susceptible to injury, which is a slight concern, but I still think he's a fantastic option if you're looking for a point of difference. The next guy is also a premium defender. He's probably my number one target if you're looking to pay up for a premium. I'm talking about Jake Lloyd. He's down 113k on his starting price. He's been scoring at a decent clip, but he hasn't yet gone bang. He hasn't produce those big ceiling scores we know he can. History tells us that this will come and he has some very juicy matchups coming up. He's got Collingwood, Frio, Hawthorne, St Kilda. These types of teams that are struggling quite heavily at the moment, I expect him to produce some big scores in these games. Therefore, I think now's the time to get on board. He's one that I'll be looking at heavily, potentially next week, to bring in. With Dunkley out last week, all eyes were on Lockie Hunter to see if he got that wing role, if he was able to get more opportunity up the field. It did look like he spent more time on the wing, but he also did play forward as well. He was scoring at a very good clip, but... Richmond dominated in the second half, so that really hindered his scoring in the second half. He only managed about 30 points after half time. Most teams aren't going to dominate the Bulldogs like Richmond did, so I think that he's an option going forward. He's very cheap. You could potentially get on early. His break even's 110, though, so you could just continue to monitor that role and make sure you're sold before jumping on board. That's probably the route that I'll be looking to take, but I still think he is a good option. Getting towards the end of my target list, I quite like Rory Sloan on return. Averaging 95, we know that he's a 95 to 105 type player. He's priced at 86, I believe, so there's upside there. Super unique, coming off the back of missing four weeks with an eye injury. So no one's going to have him. He's 620k, so he's nice and cheap. If you're looking for a midfielder, I think he's potentially one that you can jump straight back on. I don't think the fitness is going to be an issue because being an eye injury, I believe that he's been keeping up with his cardio training. He should be fit. He should be peaking. And against Port Adelaide in the showdown, I expect him to go big straight off the bat. And last of all, the last guy that I'll be looking at, not necessarily to bring in this week, but I'm quite interested in his role going forward, and that's James Warple. I did mention at the start of the season that he was going to get very cheap. He's just over 550k now, which is absolutely mind-blowing to me. He's a guy that can push that 100-point average, but he just hasn't been given that inside role for whatever reasons. O'Meara and Wingard out last week meant that Warple played inside. He did his usual business and he scored 124. So it looks like O'Meara and Wingard are going to return this week. I'll be interested to see if Hawthorne liked what they saw last week and, and continue to use Warple through that midfield. If that's the case, he provides super value and he's definitely one that intrigues me quite a lot. A couple guys with some huge break-evens and therefore potentially you can pick up in a few weeks time at a really cheap price include Max Gorn, 
156 break even. If you don't have the set and forget combo now, try and ride out another two weeks because you'll be able to pick yourself up Gorn at a nice cheap price. Jordan Ridley and Dustin Martin are two other guys with high 140 break evens. I expect them to be at that low 600 to high 500 price range in a couple weeks time and at that price they provide lots of upside so they'll be guys that i'll be looking to target in a couple weeks that's my trade wrap for round eight guys these are all the guys that i'll be looking at this week that you guys should be looking at targeting this week in conclusion i think the one down one up approach is the way to go i'll be trying to get rookies off the field but Another thing that you guys need to consider is buys. Make sure that you're trading in guys that suit your buy structure going forward. Buys are quickly creeping up on us. I will have a video dropping on that later this week to help you guys out with your buy structure and planning going into that period. If I haven't mentioned any guys in this video, it's probably because I'm not looking at them. I don't think they're great targets. And just quickly touching on some of these higher price premiums like your Clayton Oliver, Brandon Ellis, these types of players, anyone that's over 800k, in my opinion, I don't think they're worth a look. I think that they're overpriced, not necessarily overpriced, you get what you pay for, but at this stage, there's plenty of value, you should be looking to generate cash and you're not going to get that from these types of players. There's guys that are priced in that high 500s, 600k that can score 100 plus. So I probably wouldn't be going for these big uber premiums yet. The time will come where you can chase these guys, which will be during the buys and after the buys. But I think right now it's better to chase these value type players. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this has helped you out in deciding what guys you should be looking at and potentially giving you a good idea on what trades you should be doing this week. If you've enjoyed the video, guys, drop a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you need any help with your trades this week. I'll make sure to get to you, provide some value. Subscribe to the channel if you want more AFL fantasy content. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look. I'm about my pledge, bitch, I'm decked up on blue bills And I won't stop until the cash pit look like fall leaves in the backfield Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit Quit to save my peace, I'm so after school special